Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Michael Benson, and I am the co-founding minister here at the Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Chico. And you know we're located in Philadelphia Square. Did you know that? That's where you are this morning, right here in North Chico. We are a science of mind center teaching universal principles. Those principles are gleaned from many of the world religions. We've taken a common thread through all of them, and we present them to you every Sunday in a lesson. And we also do that in our classes. So those of you who have taken class, I salute you. You know a little bit more about who you are, and that's good. Those who haven't taken a class yet, well, when you're when you're called, you'll know. You'll know. You'll know. I, I resisted for many, many years taking a class. Don't know why. Thought it was foolish. I knew about myself. <clears throat> what more is there to know? Ooh, boy, every day there's more to know. So I'm pleased you're with us this morning, and as we share Sunday celebration, I, I want to remind you that you know we do have a 10 o'clock meditation. Uh, it was lovely this morning. How many? How many were? Several of you were here this morning. Yes. Um, if you can come, it's a wonderful way to breathe. Breathe starts promptly at 10. Many of you who were here at 10 in a few seconds, well, oh, sorry, but. Uh, the door, the door, <laughs> Matt, what are those called? The uh, uh, sergeant in arms, pretty, pretty insistent about you know starting on time. So um, come, come early, uh, enjoy the company and enjoy meditation. So the theme for the month of May is living in love through evolution. When I was a kid, evolution was something that happened um, at the end of life the end of this human life. Because we just lived and played, did what we did, and then we died and we evolved to something else. Well, this teaching of science of mind is defined as evolution is the time and process through which an idea unfolds to a higher state of manifestation. And since ideas are divine realizations, Evolution will go on forever. Well, that still kind of sounds like you know something after we die. But what I know, my friends, that it's every single moment. It's every moment of our life. It's a process that we're always involved in. And it's a continuum of itself. Of itself. We can't get out of evolution. Let that sit for a second. But what I believe to know about this moment-to-moment -moment evolutionary process is that it's a constant flow of, of a divine energy and the intelligence of God, of spirit that must express through us. And so to not evolve, to say, I'm not going to evolve, is to stop our growth. To stop our, our intelligence from moving, our, moving us forward to something that we couldn't have imagined. It's happened for me a lot. Evolution is what I call the breath of life that's breathed into us in the beginning. It's called you. And now in the middle of your life, you are sustained by this life force, this in and out force of life, this breath, this energy. And at the end, this life force or divine energy of life returns to itself. So it's a it's it's a it's a it's a reciprocal continuum 
evolutionary process that I find very comforting. I always wondered, we come into this life, and as a child we're animated. This wiggly thing is no parasite. <laughs> Cut the cord, and still we need to be taken care of. We need to, you know, nurse and whatever we do, and all that stuff to take care of. And we go through life and we take care of ourselves, and then we kind of make us return to that state. And that's how I that's how I viewed Karen at the last four or five weeks of her human life here. I viewed her as a child, as a baby. And you know what? It was beautiful. It was beautiful when you could see life as an opportunity, as an opportunity to express and feel, and in her case, receive love. Because many times in my life, I thought, isn't that terrible? Well, on the human level, I wouldn't want that. And yet, I don't know what it's going to be like for me. My evolution, my soul, may require that. And I know if it does, there will be those who will parent me on my way. So, thank you, Karen, for keeping me in truth, because it was a real clarity for me. So, here you are, in this life, in a state of what I call in between, in between coming in, in between going out of this human life. What are you breathing into it? What are you taking in? to your life that you're aware of or unaware of? What ideas and desires of spirit are you destined to present out of yourself? That's a big question I ask myself. Why am I here? What am I here to do? And how can I best do that? Ralph Waldo Emerson said this, the only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. The only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. Well, that makes logical sense to me. Does it to you? Make a choice, and then go for it. We teach choice here. Choose what you want and manifest that, all right? So what about in those times when they are perceived as hard, traumatic? Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you've lost all of your life savings, gone through a rotten divorce. A lot of things happen in life. A lot of times we feel like we're at the bottom of that barrel of life. And it's hard to see above that edge when we're at the bottom in that situation. But it's at these times, those times specifically, where our greatest evolution can happen. Can happen. Now I'm just saying you have to have that. But to go through something and come out, getting out of that barrel, not being stuck in the in the in the the, the swirl of, of all of that uh, experience. And what I know about those times for myself, after Louis made his transition, I was in that barrel for a while. I was going round and round, round and round, round and round not quite seeing over the edge for a while. Been there? Good luck? Just to make it to me, to me, to me, to me. 
And it's a very compelling force, this evolution force. And many times it requires, and it did me, to be still and not go round and round, round and round. It's called me calm many times, like in the eye of a hurricane. And to turn to that spirit of God within. Now, when, as I said in a previous lesson, there's this surround sound of our thinking that can drive us crazy. <laughs> Temporarily. But to turn away from that is, is, is the call and the key. I believe many times if it was not for what happened, you would not be evolved to your greatest. Story, most recent in the, about the youth in Baltimore. You want to know that story? Mom saw her son, recognized him under his hoodie, said, that's my boy. She raced down there, smacked him around. That's a compelling force. <laughs> Ripped off his hoodie and told him to get home when he belonged. How's that? Turning away, come back to the come back to home. And out of that, he got a call. He got a call from the person known as the lone survivor. Do you know who he is, the Marine? He was the last man standing. In this hole among his buddies, gave him a call and said, I'd like to invite you, young man, to come spend time with a few of my buddies and myself. They want to talk to you. If any of that had not happened to any of those people, this wouldn't have happened. This is their evolution. This lone survivor has become a mentor. And this young boy can make a difference at school at his level if he should choose to do that. So they've all they've all evolved out of a seeming, oh my God, isn't that terrible situation? There's good in everything. There's good in everything. <clears throat> you know, um, I like to use the word equipped because. You know, we're equipped, but we don't know it yet. Sometimes those greatest mishaps can compel us and equip us to rise up that part of us that says, oh, wow, I did not have that in me. Did not have that in me. I want to share a little reading with you. I came across this while I was doing my my preparation for today, and it's a book given me by Dr. Carolyn out of her library. It's a book titled Values, A Philosophy of Human Needs. It's a conversation between Ernest Holmes and Milton Sills. It was published in 1952. So it begins with Dr. Holmes, and he says, the universal intelligence must be a sense of goodness, beauty, and truth. And Milton says, just how do you conceive that goodness, Ernest? You can only conceive it from our own human point of view of goodness. Ernest says, yes, only from my own viewpoint. That is the only way anyone can conceive it. Milton says, well, that essence of goodness is just your highest ideal of what human goodness is. <clears throat> Ernest says, we sense a goodness beyond anything we have yet experienced. And Milton says, we all imagine a goodness greater than any we have experienced, but that is a human ideal based on a human point of view. In regard to goodness. The final comment by Ernest is, perhaps Milton, 
perhaps the difference between God and man is only in degree and not in essence. So in essence, the truth, when, we, when you hear, we are all that God is. We are expressions of the one. It's our perception of it. It's our degree of understanding of it. But the true essence of it doesn't change. It's our concept of it. So when you allow spirit to evolve you, you are always in the right timing and circumstances. And no matter how it may appear, or feel, or seem, we're always in the right place at the right time. When I first came to Northern California from the LA area, and I shared my concepts of farming, I thought, you know, rice came from rice roni <laughs> off the streetcar in San Francisco. <laughs> That's all I saw on television. And so when I came north and drove through all this rice land and all this all this grain and stuff, you know, wow, I had a, an epiphany. I had a realization. <coughs> my, my mind expanded. And, um, and so I got to watch them harvest and, you know, do do the wheat. And, uh, you know, they chop it and they, and they separate all of that exterior from the seed of whatever it is, they take the chaff away. And to me, that's experience. That's experience. When we can when we can take away all that extra stuff we don't need and get right down to the seed of who we are. Now in the olden days they used oxen to trample the chaff and then they'd separate the seed out. Sometimes I felt trampled in my process. How about you? <laughs> well, now they use machines to do the same thing, but the same concept, beat it up, knock it around, so that it produces and leaves just that bit of goodness that is the best of the best. That is yet to sprout. So there's a seed within us, a seed within us that's always there if we but evolve enough to remove all that false belief and garbage that we have allowed ourselves to pile on. So, my friends, remember, you are always becoming more of the truth of who you really are. Always. That endings are always new beginnings. That's not always easy to see. But they are. That a, a trampling, a threshing, always reveals that seed of perfection that you are. That's your God self. We feel it at times. We know what's there. And yet other times we deny that out of it. We just, we just don't let ourselves believe in it. And what happens for me when I'm in non-belief, a situation shows up that goes right to the very core of a false belief, that I'm not good enough, that I'm not worthy, that I'm not loving enough, that I'm not smart enough. I go, <gasps> it's like it's a wound that's still within me. And so when that happens for me, used to be to me. When it happens for me, okay, yeah, there's some, some chaff I have to get rid of. It's taken more of a thrashing. If I let that, you know, uh, break away, if I get to the root of that, then I can be more of the perfection that I truly am. So allow that seed of truth to germinate as your gift in this life. And remember to nurture yourself with thoughts of love. Thoughts of love. How do you love yourself? How do you love yourself? I like to go out on my deck in the morning, early, or like last night, 
the moon. How many times have you that stuff? Gosh, just to step out of my little box called my home, that I box what I think is important inside of. <laughs> I step out and go, whoa, yeah. There's the beauty. There's the, the sense of, yeah, that's right. So love yourself enough and know what that means to you and how to do that. And when you do, you'll be standing as tall, as tall as you possibly can, as the spiritual magnificence that you are. Because I believe and know you are ever becoming the ever more, which is the truth of who you are. Namaste. 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 Namaste.